Yo, what's good? This is Core Mega. I'm on allhiphop.com. Peace. Yo, what's going on, everybody? It's your man Chuck Creekmer, a.k.a. Jigsaw, here at One World Studios in Manhattan. And we are here with my man, Core Mega, the one and the only, the, 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 the realness himself in the flesh. What's up? What's up, Chuck? You already know what hey, it is. Oh, don't talk soft now, man. Come on, man. <laughs> We just started talking, man. We was talking about everything in, yeah. in One World. What's good with you, though, man? Chilling. Happy to be here. Had to pay my dues to come see you. Y'all you know appreciate saying? that, man. As many of y'all should. Yeah, yeah. So first things first, man, you bring in the realness part two back mm -hmm. uh, over 20 years after the original drop. What, what, makes you, what makes you bring that sequel to us? The fans. Um, I initially never seen myself as a sequel person. And then uh, fans kept floating the idea to me. And then one day I said, I'm thinking about doing a, a realness sequel. And then the response was overwhelming. Yeah. I said, fuck it, I got to do it. And then um, um, the rest is history. Yeah. Now, you know, that was a different space and time for you. That yeah. realness was much different. Yeah. What does the realness look like now for you? <laughs> um, New York was different. New York was different. My life was different. My my mental space was different. My uh, my uh, infrastructure was different. Now um, I'm a father of two. Um, wiser, and I understand who I am as an artist, as a brand. When I first made the realness, it was um. I just wanted to make that one album and I was out because I felt frustrated with the industry at that time and I felt like there wasn't a place for me. So I just did that album as a, I, just so I could say I did an album and I was going to go back to the street. And then um, the album took off and and here we are 21 years later. Yeah, yeah. Now can you, you know, tell people just a little bit about, you know, your walk, your journey you know what makes you who you are you know because the game has changed a lot you know like mm. the younger generation may not be as familiar well i think uh i think some of the younger generation has to do their due diligence in life period i think the dissociation is from lack of father figures in the homes because when you got all male figures in the home, because a lot of times when there's no male figures in the home, you don't respect some of the elders. Right. You become your own man mentally. And I see a lot of that in society. But I notice like the people that have male figures in their life, they see things different. So like me and you, we was talking earlier. And it's like I was telling you I had a house for 21 years yeah. because I listened to one of my elders. Yeah. My friends wouldn't have told me to get a house. I listened right. to the OG. So with rap, it's like if anything you get a, be a part of, if you love it, do the research on it or do the due diligence on it. I find that a lot of people rap for money. They don't rap because they love the music or the culture or because they're proud of it. They rap because they're too scared to hustle and they're too lazy to get a job. So a young person, if you know about Michael Jordan... You should know about Big Daddy Kane. Mm -hmm. Jordan's older than Kane. Right. Mm -hmm. If you know about uh, some of these wrestlers, there's little kids that know about wrestlers that's in their 60s. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? But you don't know about some rappers. So it's like, it's all about doing your due diligence. Mike Tyson was one of the greatest boxers ever. If you listen to some of his early interviews, he used to talk about Jack Dempsey and things of that nature. He studied the greats. Yeah. Kobe, he studied the greats. Yeah. So to be great, you have to study greatness. So if a artist doesn't know about me, they could do their research, do their due diligence. And if not, just listen and then you'll 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 learn something. What do you think about the idea of studying hip hop in school, like literally the history of it? You know, I was talking to somebody the other day, I did an interview mm -hmm. and um he was saying some similar stuff. The kids don't know this, the kids don't know that. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Well, you know, when we were in school, we studied the people 
30 years before 20 whatever you know which was like the dr king era mm -hmm. malcolm x era and even some even some of the um lesser knowns were were not known until later but my point was we should be studying hip-hop in a similar fashion i think we should but i think it your first uh school is at home that's a fact and take me for example i think marvin Gaye might be my favorite r&b guy ever he's before my time i know about mark malcolm x i knew about um marvin Gaye. i know about sam cook i know about sam cook because that's what i i heard about sam cook from one of my aunts i heard motown in the in our in the home so something that you hear at home is you gravitate towards like richard Pryor is my favorite comedian my father used to always play richard Pryor, and then i started liking it to this day he's like my favorite so it's like when you're cultured and when you grow up around culture you either gonna absorb it or you're gonna ignore it yeah. and a lot of times i think uh that crack era really devastated our communities in in, in so many ways yeah. because it stripped us of our culture in some ways like their households were broken up and in those households being broken up, you had to learn to survive. So when you learn to survive, you're really not being cultured because now your your culture is the streets. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of young people that grow up now, you know, they are the, the kids of people from that era. And some of them weren't cultured. Some of them didn't have, you know, that strong foundation at home. Yeah. The morals and principles weren't taught to some of them and some some of us so it's like i think uh if if these younger dudes and the younger females do their research and they they find their true selves they'll learn to respect the culture more like you don't like with the females study the great study a, a lauren hill study a Sha rock study a shante and you know everything before and in between and then find your identity Right now, the real problem with hip hop is it's too much outside influence. Yeah, you you opened one of your albums like that about yeah. the outside influence. Yeah, that was a, a mega philosophy. Yeah, because think about it: when hip hop first started, it was all people of color mm -hmm. making the rules, making the decisions, the creative perspective of it. The gatekeepers. Um, once the outsiders got into it, they bought into it. And it's like, now all of a sudden they tell you what to do. Oh, nah, you need to make a song like this. Or do that, do that. But it, originally, we were following, we were just doing what we wanted to do. We were doing what we felt. And now, people are doing what they think is going to bring them success. So, I think if, I think if, uh, I said this Recently, when I was giving a speech, I was talking about culture versus greed. Mm. So greed and culture will always conflict because they have different uh, goals. They have different end games. Mm. You can make a perfect album and it doesn't sell the way a certain corporation wants it to sell. They'll look at it as a failure. But somebody that's into the culture will look at it as a stellar, beautiful classic a masterpiece yeah. so it's like we have to find our, our our middle ground which one do we want so that's the beauty of being independent with integrity mm -hmm. you do what you want i do what the fuck i want as far as music as long as i'm not selling out or playing myself and then i have a team of people if if they say it sounds good then i i, I feed off of that but i i also feed Body language is the most honest language in the world. Mm -hmm. So if I'm playing a song for you, you know, if I'm in a room full of people and I'm playing a the song, then, you know, they change the subject. Yo, you seen that Knicks game last night? Or, <laughs> you know, right, right. I see that happen to people all the time. Yeah. But if you play something that everybody's engaged into it, then you got them. And if you play a certain song and people want to hear it again, or it's a certain reaction you get, you know it's a good song. Right. But you take that same song to a certain person in the corporate office, they might say, nah, we want something like, what's on the radio now right. so it's like you got to know you got to it got to be balanced you let us hear some of the realness too in the studio here uh what, what was our body language saying body language was pretty happy yeah <laughs> <laughs>
Um, Yo, so you you already revealed that um, you know you already revealed Nas is on the album. Yeah. So we we heard it, it and uh, the beat is by Alchemist. Can you give people just a little bit of you know just a little you know info on that? Just just a little. I know it's all it's um, out there. You put it out there. You know what I'm saying? So we not. I ain't put the Alchemist part out. You did just uh, now. Oh man, my bad. My bad. <laughs> it's all good. Um. I'm just gonna say I don't even know what to say about that song. Um, I just think it, it was something that was long overdue for the culture. Even um, when me and Nas weren't speaking, he had fans that was like wanting him to work with me, and I had fans that wanted me to work with him. And we both heard them. Mm-hmm. We both heard what the fans were saying. So this song is beautiful. Um, from a cultural standpoint, from a creative standpoint and from a human standpoint like friends you know what i'm saying so it's a beautiful i think this is a a beautiful moment and um i the public will see soon how did y'all work it out we're gonna we're gonna say that we're gonna say that for okay. the we're gonna okay. say that one <laughs> okay but I, love wins man yeah that's a fact Nas is doing this thing right now um some of us kind of Give him a lot of credit in terms of just holding that lyricism high in in a in a in the public space. You know what I mean? A commercial space, I guess you could call it. Um, but then, uh, then, then there's the 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 more underground and the more independent uh, people like yourself uh, doing it. How how are you feeling about the state of the the culture now? Mm-hmm. You know, I mean. I won't. I won't put no words in your mouth. The state of the culture. Yeah. The best thing that I've seen happen recently that I like, that I think artists could use to their benefit, is Funk Master Flex challenging artists. Yeah. Okay. I, Let's talk about that. I like that because yeah. look at the artists that he's challenging. He's char- challenging artists that are more catered toward the street, or artists that don't get as much airplay as maybe they should. Right. So, answer the call. You mm-hmm. answer the call. You stand up to the challenge, and it benefits. It's mutual. Come on, Math Alpha got a song played on Flex. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, you know, that's dope. Like, who would expect that? Even he didn't expect that, right? He'll but did t- that come from Flex, or is that because he was being pressured as well? I don't think. I don't. I don't think it was pressure. Okay. I don't think it was pressure. All I know is the outcome. I'm more I'm more impressed with the outcome. Like he got to flex his muscles as an artist. Yeah. And and flex doing that, you never know who he's gonna call next week. You fuck around and call out a, a legend like Rock him or somebody or you know what I'm saying? It's like giving people a voice that were whose voices were muted before. What happens when Flex calls you out? What you what you what's your response? <laughs> in a good way, in a good way. Listen, he's calling out people every, even when he calls you out it's in a good way. He's doing it respectfully. He's calling out people telling challenging them to come up with a song. Yeah. If he was to call me out, it wouldn't even be fair because I have a whole album of daggers. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like I could just close my eyes and dig in the back. If Flex called me, I might just throw them the Nas record. Right, right. I might just, you know what I'm saying? Like, I might, because, cause look, it's one thing to get called out and get that moment. Like, my album is so well structured. If one of if one of them songs, if one of my daggers get played on this show, that shit is going to stay on the radio. Yeah. I'm telling you now. It's not going to be like, oh, that was good. That was cool. Like, yeah. I promise you. So, I agree. I agree with you. I agree. It seems like you've been cooking this for a minute, like, you know, really holding people in suspense. Why, why are you uh, drag, not dragging it out? That's not the right word because it has a negative connotation. But okay. it feels like you just been like this is in the um, the crock pot. I give you the total honest answer. Um, initially, I wanted my album to come out in 2020. Um. The pandemic slowed down thing. I didn't even want to come to New York because remember at, the, at first they were saying like New York is the epicenter of the of the uh, coronavirus. They they were making it like this is ground zero, zombie land or some shit. Yeah. So I was like, damn, I ain't even seen my father in six months. Wow. 
during that time. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I was trying to stay clear. And then it's like I didn't want to go to the studio because the engineer might got it. So I was like, damn, this is tough. So at that point, I was trying to buy studio equipment. And the equipment place didn't even have the equipment. Cause it was, so it was like it was it was crazy. And that was 2020. And then ironically, around that time, King's Disease came out and I was on it. So that was the big surprise for the industry. And then once that came out, I said, you know what? I don't even want to come out this year. I just want to keep promoting King's Disease and, and, and rocking with that for the rest of the year. So when that came out, I just promoted it diligently. And, you know, it was a blessing. It won a, a Grammy. So yeah. now I'm a Grammy Award winner yeah. thanks to Nas. And um, so 2020 was out of, out of the way. I wasn't coming out 2020. Then 2021, I was going to come out. I had it mapped out, but the reason I didn't come out 2021 is because I've learned to be patient and I've learned to have my greatest acquisition in the last 10 years is, is patience. Mm. And another acquisition is empathy. Mm. So usually as an artist or as a creative, you might even know this from, from your line of work. Sometimes you 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 want an artist or a producer to do something, and they say they're gonna do it, and then they take long, or they just front. Yeah. So there was a few artists that are not a few. There was a couple of artists that I waited on, and uh, let's just say one of them, he fronted on me. I'm not gonna say his name, but I'm glad he fronted on me. Yeah. Because I'm going to tell you the story about him fronting on me. So basically, he was supposed to do something for me. And uh, he didn't do it. I'm the type of dude, I'm not going to keep chasing you to do something like I'm a groupie or something. Yeah. So I hollered at him once. He said, I got you. You know, after he's supposed to do it, I hollered at him one more time. He said he got me. It never happened. I said, cool. So him not not doing what he was supposed to do for me benefited me because I gave Nas like, I don't know, 10 beats to choose from. Yeah. Nas is real particular with beats. If he doesn't like something, he's not getting on it. I don't give a fuck who's on it. Yeah. So the beat, I sent I sent Nas some fire. Right. And he was like, this is too slow. Or, you know, I'm, you know, I'm in a different kind of space. I want to do something like, you know, something different. Then I happen to send him that beat that he's uh, on. Right. And that same beat that he's on, the other rapper was supposed to get on there, right. but fronted. Right. So right. if that rapper didn't front, Nas would have probably wouldn't even been on my album. Wow. So I'm thankful to that yes. rapper for fronting on me. Like I got yeah. the last laugh. You would never front on me and and get to brag about it. That's the blessing. And he's a Nas fan. Right. So he played himself, not me. Oh. So man. so when he so when he didn't do that song, that beat, and then Nas said, yo, I like this beat, I was like, yes. Yeah. So I got the Nas verse in 2021. Then in 2021, um, Large Pro jumped on the album. Okay. You know, I had to have Large Pro on there. And then in 2021, I might, I might, it might have even been early 2022, Harry Fraud jumped on the album. Right. So... Me, as an artist, like, if a rapper say they're going to get on your project or, you know, y'all doing business, y'all supposed to do the business, and they don't do it, I used to get mad about that. Or I used to be like, yo, like, not respect a person. Even I still might not respect you if, you if you do it a certain way. But I've learned to have empathy, and that's me putting my feet in other people's shoes. Like, because mm -hmm. I've done that to people before, not intentionally. Like, Jay Hood wanted me to get on a project. I'm saying his name because that's my man, and he wanted me to get on a project for years. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I got you. I 100% sincerely had him. Yeah. But where I live, I didn't have access to studios like that. Yeah. So sometimes an artist will have a deadline, and I might miss the deadline, but I really intended on doing it. And that's, and another thing people didn't know about me was, like, like I, I raised my daughter from, like, elementary school to high school grad mm -hmm. till she, she's out of high school like so that's why i was going from rap i was yeah. being a father yeah. Yeah. so people didn't understand that because a lot of artists 
the, the woman takes care of the kid or they live a different kind of lifestyle. So my lifestyle is different. Mm-hmm. So Jay Hood, I wanted to do a song for him, but I never got a chance to do it. So at my worst, I said, you know, let me do a drop for him or let me talk on his joint because I could do that. You know, you could do that on Instagram. Yeah. I could, you know, yeah. so, so I did a drop for him because I felt so bad that I didn't get to, you know what I'm saying? So I try to get rappers that kind of benefit of doubt rather than get upset saying, oh, man, this dude took long away from it. I say, this dude is a busy person, and you know what I'm saying? So me being patient and empathetic is what made the realness too take longer because I waited for people rather than get frustrated, rather than say, you can't get mad at a Nas for taking long to give you a verse. This dude is not, this dude is a mogul right now. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. He rap is just something of something else he does amongst other things. Or a Harry Fraud, he's doing production for numerous people. Right. Like Street Runner came to me late. Street Runner was on there, but he came to me late for another joint. And he's like, you know, he's like, pardon me, bro. How I'm gonna get mad at him when every few months I'm on Instagram, I see him putting up another platinum plaque. He's doing stuff for Khaled and Rick yeah. Ross and Jay, and yeah. he's a big deal. So me being an understanding. And also being grateful because I'm grateful that I'm able to work with a producer of that caliber. I'm yeah. grateful to have a Harry Fraud. I'm grateful to have a street run. I'm grateful to have these people see me in that light. Yeah. So that the album took long because of that. And then the last thing that made it take long was negotiation. Uh. Because I was I was going to put out my album myself, like around February. I was just going to put it out. And then I had a, I had a situation, I had a structure of what I was going to do, what I was going to do with the digital platform, what I was going to do with the vinyl, and what I was going to do with the CDs and cassettes. I had it mapped out. And then I didn't. Uh, I started having these conversations with Viper. Mm-hmm. And then those negotiations took a while. Mm-hmm. So me me wanting, this, wanting to give it a shot made it take long. Rather than say, F it, I'm just going to throw it out. So, but at the same time, everything happens for a reason and, and it happened at the right time because me um, taking my time with this album, it gave me a chance to listen to everybody else stuff and see where I'm at with it also. Mm-hmm. So last year, Lloyd Banks mm-hmm. was one of the people that inspired me. When I heard his Cody, I was like, oh man, I, I had to reach out to him and say, yo, bro, good work. Like yeah. whenever I see somebody do something I'm proud of, I, I reach out to them, let them know. So. I'm hearing what everybody got, but I'm also hearing artists come out of nowhere saying they got album of the year or they like they they like they talking with such bravado, bravado that it makes me I got to hear you I got to hear your music now. Yeah. And when I hear it I'm like, okay, you know what I'm saying? Right, right, so, right. Like mm-hmm. So yeah, so it's like I took my time. Once I was almost done, I took my time with and also my my engineer has he his schedule is very busy too, cause he's the sound guy for Drink Tramps. Got you. Got you. So, there's a lot of fact factors. Not to mention, I had COVID in January. Okay. During the uh, recording of this album, my other engineer had COVID at one point, and at one point in this process, my man has had COVID. Yeah. So it was certain things that was slowing down the process, but the finish, the finished product, is something that um. I could be proud of with no excuse. Do you think this will be, you know, I, realness was actually, you know, classic, no question. Uh-huh. Where does this fit in your body of work, realness too? Realness too is going to be, well, who am I to say what's going to happen? Only God knows. But I know. How you feel though? I feel very, I don't know last time you interviewed me for a project, but I usually I'm just what it is, what it is. I'm not excited about music. Yeah. I'm excited about this album. Yeah. Like I've seen I've seen a grown I've seen a man cry after mm. hearing one of these songs and he was with a la- with a woman. Mm. I've seen the reactions from people when they hear this project. This is on par with the realness. Okay. Like even Nas was like, "Yo, another thing I was holding up, you know, like I'm the type of dude like say you you're cool. Another reason my album took long too. It's because, like, last year, like, Nas bust out with an album, what, what was that, August? 
Kings two, uh, Kings Disease two. Yeah, yeah. So nobody expected that. Not even me. I was like, you sneaky and motherfucker, the other one. right? So he <laughs> yeah. bust out. Now I'm not worried about the other one. I'm just worried yeah. about that. Yeah. So he bust out in August. Boom, right? Right. Then AZ came out in yeah. September. Boom. Yeah. So everybody's looking like Omega's coming out in October. I didn't want to do that. I, me myself, I didn't want to ride on the bandwagon. Yeah. And I and I didn't want to give nobody excuses to be like, oh, uh, he just he just you know mm-hmm. did that because of Nas and AZ. Like I'm I don't want no excuses when my joint come out. So I want to. I'm the type of dude let my let let my people breathe. Yeah. I don't want to step on like let you have your moment. I'm not trying to step in somebody's moment. So when they when that came out, that's what made me say, all right, 2022. But I was gonna come early 2022, and then I was gonna come July. That was that was the date I really wanted to do. And then um, like I said, things happened, but some of the right things happened, like. I'm also dealing with a lot of artists on this album. Like, if you if yeah. you look at my my artwork for the single, the artwork alone was getting conversation. Yeah, the, the whole the whole album is going to be like that because I got different kind of artists, right? Like doing paintings and graphic art, dope. Yeah. Like it's a full product. So timeliness, quality control, play the role. In but it sounds like you doing it yourself. What what made you go with the label this time? Well. It's a partnership, but okay. the reason I went with the label is 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 this. When you, a person like me, I got tired of doing everything, everything. Yeah. on my own. Right. I think only an egotistical person thrives off of that. Like, I did this, I did that, I did that. I'm not that person. Yeah. So, as a human being, you need a rest. You got to understand, like... I don't even have a manager. Yeah. So anything you see me doing in the last over 10 years, I probably negotiated it. Like, I pick my own beats. Right. I write my own music. Mm-hmm. I do my own clothing collaborations. I design some of the clothes. I approve everything that gets done. I approve. Mm-hmm. Like, when there's interviews, I travel, yeah. as you see. Mm-hmm. And I don't live down the block. Right. Um, I do so much that sometimes it's like over I wrote two books yeah. within the last couple of years within the last 5 years so it's like all of this to do all of that it's not fun yeah so it's like when you have a a situation where there's a team assembled and people thrive at playing their position it could benefit you so I said let me see let's see let's see what do I got to lose yeah. because they have a team there, and I believe that if everybody does their job efficiently, which they do automatically, that this project will 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 thrive. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Um, you you've uh, dropped a number of uh, projects in the last few years. Um, all of which, you know, they they hit differently. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, so for us, we listen to it. But but you had to be, too, you know, on that frequency sometimes to, to get it. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, I know exactly um, what you're saying. And part of that is social media nowadays. Mm-hmm. Part of that is uh, streaming services mm-hmm. and being placed prominently. And sometimes it's just the algorithm in general. Mm-hmm. How are you in this new kind of era of music, whereas um, people aren't necessarily looking at a TV or listening to radio to get, you know, even the radio programs we used to go to to hear new music is, is it's kind of gone. I'm going to keep it real with you. I don't even think about all that. You know how they say, you know how the saying goes, that's outside of my pay grade mm-hmm. or that, that's outside of my... Uh, window my scope of knowledge yeah. so basically i'm not tech i'm not tech savvy like that i'm not the super algorithm knowing guy and all mm-hmm. that so i have people that do that there's yeah. somebody but me as an artist i think as an artist you have to separate yourself from all of that mm-hmm. you separate yourself from all that and you be a creative mm. and then you worry about all that when you're done yeah because if you focus on algorithms you could turn yourself into a clown like there's certain artists that I loved yeah. until I seen them on social media. Yeah. And I was like, this dude's a clown or yeah. she's goofy or you know, 
So it's like, be yourself, create your product. And after that, the product that, look, I just got a, I just got a, uh, where's my phone at? Hold on. So look, I just got a notification. I got 10,000 streams from um, Audio Mac. Right. So, okay, I don't, now sometimes somebody will tell me that, tell me something, or I'll see something like that, but I don't know if it's good or bad, because I don't, you know what I'm saying? What I focus on is the fans' reaction. Yeah. So my DMs and my messages I've gotten from fans, like shout out my man Ginger from Queensbridge, like, yo, you dropping jewels, or regular fans, like, yo, like, I needed this, or right. people saying this is a breath of fresh air. Yeah. You know, that's that's what I do this for. So the algorithm, it's like it's, like, it's a sport. It's a team. You have a team. I'm the, I'm, I'm the point guard. Mm-hmm. You do the rebounding. Right. You know what I'm right, saying? Right, right, right. We all going to play defense. We all going to try to do what we do on offense. But you you do the rebounds. You know what I'm saying? Let the coach coach. And 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 everybody play their position. So I'm not worried about that tech stuff. I'm not worried about the algorithms. I'm not worried about likes and mm. views and all that stuff. I'm worried about making a dope product. Cause you could get you could you could suck and get all those views and stuff and get you could you could be a clown you could do something real goofy, and get more algorithms than somebody that they made a masterpiece. Yeah. My job is to make a great album, and then after that, my team will handle that. My tech savvy people on the team will handle that. My, you know, everybody has a position to play. So I'm gonna be the creative, and I don't worry about all that other stuff. I don't worry about. I I just let it let it let nature take its course. Speaking of clowns, we've seen a lot of clown behavior um, on social media, a lot of interviews being done, not naming any names, but um, I I miss the mystique of hip hop, you know, where, you know, you presented your album or your art, even just videos, and we we saw what you put out. But now it seems like the attention is more important than the music even. Yeah. How you feel about that? I, I understand what you're saying. Kanye West said it best. He said, there's some people that would rather look like they're doing well than to actually do well. Mm. That's the that's the moment that we're in. And hopefully this moment dissipates and people go into a new moment of, of achieving and and rising and, and making changes. Mm. Um, when I see the clown stuff, I ignore it. Or I just make a mental note like, He's goofy. I, I'm, I'm gonna keep giving him some space. Um, if it's somebody I'm cool with and they do something that I think is inappropriate or goofy, I will pull them to the side. Mm. I won't even do it on social media because you don't never. I never want to publicly, you know, saying uh, check somebody. Yeah. But I'll pull them to the side or I'll give them a call or a text or whatever, and we'll have that conversation. But what I find is that if I could sell attention. I that'd be my that'd be my second main job. Yeah. Attention is more addictive than any drug. Right. Yeah. Attention. Yeah. So a lot of people want attention more than anything. They don't even want to be great. Right. They want right. attention. So I'm the type of dude I'd rather have less less exposure and more respect as an artist. Uh less exposure and more classics. One thing somebody caught me something the other day. And I said, you know what? I might keep that. Somebody said, Mega is Mr. Consistent. Mm. Um, and I said, I like that. Because it's like, when you think of my albums, I don't care if you like me or not. The Testament was considered a classic. Yeah. I didn't say it was a classic. I mean, Ego Book of Rap List had it as one of the greatest albums in history that wasn't released. Right. Uh, other people's, you know, one of the most bootlegged albums in history. These are from publications, not from me. The realness is considered a classic. Uh-huh. The true meaning is considered a classic. I won a fucking Source Award and other awards from the true meaning. Now, when you look at it, that means my first three albums were considered class- classics. So I'm in a rare space just from that alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But people ain't ready for that conversation. Yeah. So you got the re- the true meaning. You got the testament, the realness, the true meaning. After that, I made Legal Hustle compilation, which which helped a lot of artists excel. Uh, and I did that to help other artists. I should have been focused on me 
but I wanted to help other people. Um, then you got Born and Raised. Born and Raised is my most slept on album. But if you if you have a conversation with real mega fans, some people be like, that's arguably mega's best album or neck and neck with his best album, right? Then you got Mega Philosophy. Mega Philosophy brought my career back. Yeah, dude. You know what I'm saying? That's when I made Mega Philosophy, I thought it was a rap. I thought that was my swan song because it was a black, conscious, mm -hmm. and hip-hop cultural album. Exactly. And I was talking some shit. And then I made the song Industry. I was like, it's over for me after this. You know what I'm saying? Because I was speaking such truths. And the funny thing is, Industry went on to become one of my most popular songs. And then Mega Philosophy actually charted in Billboard and everything. I was like, wow, I didn't expect that. And then you got brothers like Chuck D., who was giving me props on that oh, album. Oh. AZ was like, AZ's like, you got the best shit out, it ain't even out yet, right. before that came out. And then he jumped, and he's like, I gotta get on there. He, that's the first album of mine AZ was on. He was okay. on a, a compilation, but that was the first album. Right. So it was like, that album brought me back. So then after I made Mega Philosophy, I was taking a break, and then uh, I was taking long, so I said, you know what, let me just throw out an EP. Cause I never, made, I wanted to always make an EP, that was a goal. So I threw out the mega EP and that touched people different. That was a whole dip. That was like a vibe. Ralph McDaniel said like that was his favorite album at that moment. He's like, this album is amazing. Like it blew my mind that Ralph liked it like that. So during the creation of mega philosophy and mega, those were different sides of me yeah. as an artist. But there were some fans that was like, we want the other mega back. Mm. So it's like, I had to tell them I'm not in that space. Yeah. So, like, I when I said uh, some of the stuff in the realness, it was real. Yeah. Like songs like "Fallen Soldiers," I barely perform those at shows. There's yeah. times I perform "Fallen Soldiers" and I really start crying or yeah. or get emotional yeah. where I can't finish the song. Mm -hmm. Or it's like like I was one foot in the street and one foot in the studio for real not like these rappers that be talking that shit so it's like i had a chip on my shoulder when i made the realness i tried to get the testament back and i couldn't get it from the label right when there was no reason for them not let me get it because i had the money for them they fronted on me so that i had a chip on my shoulder i had a chip on my shoulder i had something to prove i didn't feel the love now I feel the love. Now mm -hmm. I got awards. Now I got Grammy. Now I got world. I just came back from Europe. Right. So it's like I feel I'm in a different space. I'm a father. Yeah. If you take me back to the year the realness came out or shortly before the realness came out, my man Blue would be alive. Mm -hmm. My man Spank would be alive. Mm -hmm. My man Drawers would be alive. Mm -hmm. I'm not even thinking my cousin Oogie would be alive. Like I could, I could do this. My man Elton would be alive. I'm not even thinking hard. My man Shabazz will be alive. Butter will be alive. Chico will be alive. Uh -huh. I'm not even thinking hard. Yeah. I could keep going. Yeah. Ron, Ron Love from Edgemere will be alive. You know what I'm saying? So I've lost so many people mm -hmm. in that time. Uh, Spunk will be home mm -hmm. rather than being in jail mm -hmm. with not knowing when he's coming home. Mm -hmm. So many changes have happened in my life i've had you know so that space i was in i was i'm in a different space now i'm trying to find peace yeah. because i never had it mm -hmm. it's something that i want um now i don't have a chip on my shoulder i i i, I performed at a rock him show at central park and he was as i was singing my verse he was singing along with me mm -hmm. do you know how mind-blowing that was That's for crazy. me yeah. i was like rod know my words yeah do you, do you know how crazy it is for me to see DMC from Rum DMC go like this, like yeah. bow down when he sees me? That's crazy. I almost started crying. Yeah, I would have. <laughs> do you know Do you know how it felt to see DMC talk about his top rappers and uh, and and mention me? This ain't. This is online. You can find it. Yeah. It's on. It's on YouTube. Mm. Do you know how it feels? Like you know what I'm saying. So it's like wow. Like all them years I was fighting for my, my props, but. Some of the greatest get you know how I feel for me being in the studio with Coogee Rap saying, Yo, bro, like you that like you the one of the illest. He like, no, you one of the illest, bro. <laughs> like, do you do you understand? And then there's younger artists that's coming up that gravitate towards me or show me love mm -hmm. from from all around the world. Not just like Little B was a 
internet Lil B, and yeah. sensation. Yeah. And I'm one of his favorite rappers. Yeah. I spoke Lil to him. Lil B's on, a real one. People yeah, be talking about love. his shorty pants or whatever, but. I don't. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's, no, nah, no. And he really. goes, he's a go-getter. Yeah. So the love that I always was seeking, I'm, I'm getting. Yeah. Um. You know, you got a label. You got you got people in the industry that believe in you. You got a label that wants to partner with you, and and the president is advocating for you. Like, bro, like, let's do this. I believe in you. I fuck with you. Like, you know, it's things like that 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 open your eyes. You I you meet fans. There's fans that got my quotes tattooed on their body. Yeah. You know how crazy that I don't even have a tattoo. Yeah. So it's certain things now. You know, I do sneakers. I did sneaker collaborations. You could look it up yourself when you get it, when this interview's done. You look the sneakers up, they selling more for what they sold for when we initially sold them. I do books, they sell out. Mm-hmm. I do collaborations, they sell out. Like that's a blessing. That is not ego. That's not nothing for me to brag about. That's something for me to be like, wow, thank you. Yeah. So it's like, so my space that I'm in now, when I did this realness two album, I didn't have no beef. I didn't have no nothing to prove. I don't have no disc records on this album. There's no Fuck the industry feelings. Mm. There's no... I didn't make no song about my people who died. I don't want to talk about death. I want to talk about life. Mm. So the realness too is like the realness, but it's growth. Mm. And it's like... It's also me still street. Like if you listen to the song Essential, I'm I'm pretty much talking to a guy that's still in the street. Because some people ain't going to leave the street. They want that. That's all they know. I was that person before. Mm -hmm. So it's like now I'm just giving you gems. Like if you're going to be out there, you know... I drop jewels, so I'm giving you golden wisdom. Yeah. You'll know detention if your co-defendant knows your business. Yeah. I'm dropping jewels and throughout the whole album. But that's what I was gonna say, man. I was thinking we need a book of of mega like like a proverbs or or a, or a, you know you said your philosophy, but you know like a book of all the jewels you've dropped, not just this album, but al- all of them really, like a a. a a symbol them. Maybe we'll work on it. Yeah. You know the crazy thing? When I didn't realize sometimes you just think of a rhyme and it's like, all right, that's a cool rhyme. But I didn't realize how impactful the words were. I could show you some of the things people write me and it'll blow your mind. Mm-hmm. It blows my mind and it keeps me, that's what humbled me more than anything. And it's like, I'll say something spontaneously and then it'll It'll trend. Right. Like I said, some people are financially rich but morally bankrupt. Mm-hmm. That was all over. The, that trended. Yeah. And it's like certain things I say become. Now I start seeing it on online, but somebody else posted like they created yeah. it. Yeah. And I just laugh. So it's like that right there is not a talent. That's gift. Because right. I don't know where that come from. Right. So. When I when I got that, sometimes I do write it down, and I share it with people because that's not for me. That's for me to share. Yeah. So I look at that as different from rhyme. But you're right. I I will try to make some quote stuff like that. One thing I wanted to ask you was the state of Queens and Queensbridge, uh, from a from a New York point of view, hip hop. Uh, I don't know if I'm missing something, but I I don't see the same number and level of artistry coming out of there right now. Uh, it, 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 am I missing it? I mean, obviously we have legends like yourself and Nas and and, and so many others um, doing their thing, even Shante and whatnot. But uh, the new crop, it seems like it's a little light. Um, let me think about this. I think the problem with rap is when we first had the culture, we just loved people for being dope. I think now there's too much isms. Mm. In other words, there's classism. Mm -hmm. There's genderism, gender bias. Mm -hmm. Because one of my favorite rappers, when I first heard rap, at one point, Shah Rock was my absolute favorite. Shout out to Shah Rock. Was my absolute favorite over everybody. So... You could say Queen's been quiet, but it really hasn't because there's this woman named Nicki Minaj who dominated. She's dominating dominated, right now. Dominated for over a decade. Yeah. And she's from Queens. That's a fact. So it's like, 
Queens always represented some way or another. And even if it did get a little quiet, it deserves a break. Okay. Because if it wasn't for Queens, rap would have faded out. Right. It was a fad to the media. Right. You remember when we was younger? Your parents probably told you that. We seen it on the news. They said rap music is a fad. It's not going to last. It's like breakdancing. And this is on the news. News dictates society. Media. Media dictates society. If the media is saying it's a fad, that means record companies aren't going to invest in that because that's going to be a loss to them. They don't yeah. see the economic um, logic behind it because it's mm -hmm. a fad. Mm -hmm. So it was an executive from Queens who had the initiative to say, yo, I want you guys to do a song with this rock and roll group. And that was Russell Simmons. And then Run DMC, the group from Queens, did that song which catapulted rap to a whole nother place. Right. Mainstream. It was a whole different vibe after that. Yeah. And then there was a guy named LL Cool J. He was mm -hmm. the first heartthrob in rap. Mm -hmm. he, LL, ladies love Cool J. He had Melly the Mel would disagree, but... Uh... <laughs> Listen, I love Melly Mel, but I've never seen a girl with a Melly Mel poster on her wall. I've seen a lot of LL posters. <laughs> I just said Melly Mel would yeah. disagree. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> So shout out to Melly Mel. Yeah, shout out Yo, to people Mel. grandmothers be liking LL. Yeah, no, nah, like, he, he Look, he, I posted a picture with LL, and they they ignored me in the whole picture. I was like, really? So, like, I'm, word? so, right, so look, you you talk about R Russell Simmons' ingenuity alone transitioned us into mainstream. Yeah. From Run DMC to LL to Def Jam, that alone. No. Molly Mars ingenuity alone okay. transitioned us okay. with production. Okay. The uses of samplings, those break, the way he was doing that, nobody was doing that. Not to mention. I ain't mean to no, no. And I'm not biased. I'm the perfect person for this job. I'm the perfect <laughs> person for this conversation because I'm not biased. I was born in Brooklyn. Okay. You okay. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So so I'm speaking from a I'm speaking from a I hate when they people do the, the borough arguments thing because I really think it's dumb. I yeah. really think it's that's really from that's the plantation shit. That's uh -huh. the plantation mentality slowly uh -huh. that we have to dissipate because we always separate. Like you can say, I look, I'm from this borough. I'm from this borough. All right, so you, I know a lot of people from your borough that killed people from your borough. Uh -huh. People from so people from every borough killed each other in every borough. You might got a a certain borough, certain parts of that borough don't even click with each other. So is it about the borough or is it just, it's just the separatism that we have amongst each other? Yeah. So I think hip hop needed everybody. It needed contributions from everybody for it to elevate. Because sometimes I yo, sometimes I might go to Harlem and I see something fly and I'll be like, I like that. And I'll incorporate that into my wardrobe. I you know, go somewhere else. We all grab from each other. But Queens was it and that's this ain't bias. Queens has the most first of all if somebody in this room can name a borough that produced more top tier groups than Queens, I will give you a hundred dollars right now. Look, Run DMC is arguably one of the greatest groups of all time. Mm -hmm. They're not even legends; they're icons. Mm -hmm. Salt and Pepper is the greatest female group in history of rap, right? Mm -hmm. That's two groups that mm -hmm. I'm naming. I ain't even get to Trial Court Quest. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then you got Mob Deep. Okay. That's four, and I'm not even thinking hard. And I can keep going. See what I'm saying? That's just from Queens. So the, the diversity of these artists. And then when you talk about lyrics, when you talk about Queens, look, Rakim is arguably the greatest to some people. And then some people say Nas is the second coming of Rakim. Nas, Queens. Rakim got his start. He recorded his first songs in Queensbridge on 12th Street at Marley Mars House. Agree. Coogee Rap, Queens. Agreed. Keras won. He made, he went against the Juice Crew. He was recording at, he was recording at Power Play Studios in Queens. <laughs> These are facts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I could go on and on. So Queens' impact changed everything. Look, 50 changed everything. When he came out, Nas changed everything. Yo, before Illmatic came out, the West Coast was dominating. 
It's a fact. The West Coast was dominating. Mm -hmm. Illmatic was a, 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 a breath of fresh air. And and everybody studied that. Every time I see an album with a bit, with a with a kid on the cover, I think of Illmatic. That's true. So it's like Queens is just yeah okay. I mean, shout I out to mean every to, borough. I ain't mean to um shout out to know, every borough. I ain't mean to trigger you. <laughs> nah, I just had to do that. You know, nah, like, nah, sometimes people because you said it's quiet and people be forgetting, but I know yeah, one nah, thing. Nah, definitely, listen, listen. I woke up today. I'm not lying. I woke up today and I said, Alexa. Play Raising Hell by Run DMC. Mm. Not the album, that song. Because mm -hmm. to me, that's the hardest song Run DMC ever recorded. Yo, Run DMC is. Run DMC is the Beatles of this rap shit. They, they transcended our whole culture. They did things that was inconceivable before them. Yo, you name somebody. Yo, man, we all wanted to buy sneakers and clothes. They were sponsored by Adidas. They was they had their own Adidas. Yeah. And their own track suits in the eighties. Crazy. Like, come on, man. I like can't even fathom that. They did so much. They did so I mean, it's the mentality, it's the it's the ingenuity. Yo, even even the cultural acceptance. Like Russell accepted yo, at, at one point we didn't listen to rock and roll and rock and rollers didn't fuck with us. Remember that that division back in the days? Yeah. He brought it together. Not only that the first white rap group was on Def Jam, the Beasties. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So and they wrote for the Beasties. Well, you know the first. So, time. so you know what I'm saying? So it's like Queens definitely, they they did their thing. Everybody, every borough contributed, but yeah. you know what I'm saying? Queens is just like we're not even gonna talk about the 50 years of hip hop and what Queens was doing, sort of previously to sort of what Cool Herc was doing. We'll get into that next year. I heard about that. Yeah. I heard about that. Shout out to uh, Flowers yeah, and yeah. Hollywood mm -hmm, yeah. and those guys who was been doing it. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to DJ Clark Kent, too, from Brooklyn. The original one or the new one? There's two of them. You know that. Right? I'm talking about Clark Kent from Crown Heights, from Union Street. Okay. Panamanian brother who helped Biggie and Jay. Yeah, yeah. Man, he just did a recent interview. I think Mecca was in that. Were you? He was there. Oh man, he did a recent interview that was mind blowing. Some yo, Clark been like that. Yeah, he, like he's like you sit and vibe with him, you are gonna learn something. He's yeah. really he's dope. He's a dope person. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So what what are your thoughts on? Um, you kind of just really gave us a whole lot, but you know, hip hop turning fifty. I think it's a beautiful thing for a thing that was supposed to be a fad yeah. that wasn't supposed to last. Um, I think it's the most. I think it's the most uh, polarizing genre of music that ever existed. Mm -hmm. It changed society. And when I yeah. say that, <laughs> look how everybody in this room is dressed. Yeah, that's a fact. I wore Tim's just cause. I mean, look how we all dress. Look how look. I mean, you you turn on the television. There's there's cartoons rapping. They use hip hop in advertisements. It's used in soundtracks, of movies now. Um, you know uh television is dominating is dominating society like yeah. hip hop has done done more for race relations than any politician I've ever seen you think so though i have white friends from all over the world now that i wouldn't even, even wouldn't have known yeah. i've been to places where they're willing to have that conversation with us mm -hmm. because of our mutual love of this culture I've okay. been to hip hop shows where there is no, barely any black people, but there is no tension. Yeah, it's like we all when a song comes on, we love. Everybody's in unison. Mm -hmm. So, hip hop is 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 a beautiful thing. It's a strong culture. Look, man, I was supposed to go to Russia uh, around the time of the COVID when the pandemic twenty twenty. Yeah, obviously, that, I don't think that's happening now. No, sir. But that just goes to show you, like. They, you know, saying like they love hip hop. They Onyx halfway lives over in um, Onyx in a lot, Russia. A, yeah, Onyx is big over there. A lot of artists that are really underground champions get mad love in in Europe. Havoc mm -hmm. just came back from Europe, mm -hmm. so it's like hip hop went worldwide. This stuff was supposed to be local, and it went worldwide. Yeah. So we're gonna get up with you closer to the release date of the realness too. Good. And and we're gonna do some different. 
different things and and talk a little more about all of this stuff. No know? doubt. You know what I'm saying? So what? what I'm gonna bring you out of Queensbridge. Yeah, yeah, let's go to Queensbridge. Yeah, I think one is up for that. All right. Yeah, definitely. Any final words on this? My final words is we need to get allhiphop.com a nice air conditioner. <laughs> That's all chipping. <laughs> oh, they man. deserve it. They don't have. Listen, wait a minute. Let me. Because I'm in, sweating in defense, like Rick James right now. In defense of the studio, we are in a a staple of New York. This building does not have central air. Oh shit. Okay, okay. because it's been here forever. Wow. Madonna was here. Mm. All types of people coming. This is a whole music building. That's dope. And um, it's it's. You know, when you ride that elevator, you you get that vibe. So let me say this: artists, stop dick riding. I don't like to use profanity, but I had to use that because y'all understand what that means. There's certain people in hip hop that y'all need to pay homage to and just show love to, and this guy right here is one of them. I'm not paid to say this. This is not something he told me to say. This is just real talk. Like I, I wasn't even really doing interviews right now because. I'm, I want to do it closer to the album, but this guy is a, an exception. So if allhiphop.com reach out to you, pay pay that respect. Pay it back. You know what I'm saying? Man. Peace and love. Salute.